digital readouts, onboard computer diagnostics, advanced electronics developed by General Motors for the 747. Now many of the same engineers are building the same technology into new GM cars and trucks. So you and your car can drive smarter. Nobody sweats the details like GM. Speed, safety, and comfort will be the keynotes of tomorrow's highways. A multicolored highway system may enable the motorist to reach his destination by following the correct color strip. The increased speed of tomorrow's automobile will demand that highway signs be larger and more simple to read, so that the motorist can anticipate his moves well in advance. Better visibility will be featured in new highway designs. As day dims into night, electric eyes automatically illuminate the way ahead. Radiant heat will keep the highway surfaces dry through rain, ice, and snow. If visibility is poor, our windshield becomes a radar screen, showing the outline of objects ahead or fog may be eliminated by dispelling devices along the right-of-way. Dashboard panels featuring built-in safety controls and electronic operating devices are predictions for tomorrow. A teletype panel shows up to the minute traffic bulletins. The recommended safe driving speed is automatically indicated. Our rear-view mirror is actually a television picture. Emergency units would combine police, fire, and ambulance services. Quick removal of disabled vehicles will reduce fire. In one sweep, a giant road builder changes rough ground into a wide finished highway. Prefabricated bridges and overpasses move immediately into place. Combining new formulas of concrete with quick-setting ceramic materials, a mobile kill is supported by the bridge it builds. For tunneling through mountains, this atomic reactor applying incredible heat literally melts the hard rock as it makes molehills out of mountains. Here is preserved the beauty and grandeur of mountain travel with the use of cantilevered skyways. The shape of our cities will change. As expanded highway transportation decentralizes our population centers into vast urban areas. With the advent of wider, faster expressways, the commuter's radius will be extended many miles. America will someday be crisscrossed by a network of super-speed transcontinental motorways. Tomorrow's living in spacious, well-planned communities will be closely integrated with the highway system. In the private motor port, the family car is automatically washed, dried, and refueled. As father chooses the route in advance on a push-button selector, electronics take over complete control progress can be accurately checked on a synchronized scanning map. With no driving responsibility, the family relaxes together. En route, business conferences are conducted by television. On entering the city, the family separates. Father to his office, mother and son to the shopping center. These new forms of vehicles will bring about special purpose roadways. Office buildings will combine unique parking and elevator services. From his private parking space, father will probably have to walk to his desk. When mother and son arrive at the shopping center, they enter a massive cylinder and their parking space literally comes to them. 
Safely above vehicular traffic, moving sidewalks make window shopping effortless. Escalator ramps carry office workers from level to level. Advances in technology will give us more time for leisure in tomorrow's living. The family vacation will always be decided by a family vote, but getting there will be simplified by a punched card system, and the car is automatically operated and guided to preset destinations. Highly specialized pleasure vehicles will have every convenience of home. Today's insurmountable barriers and sheer cliffs will be scaled by highway escalators. One minute, our car is a highway vehicle. The next, a cabin cruiser. Keeping pace with America's economy, heavy-duty freightways will combine railroad volume with highway flexibility. Central traffic control radios a truck train, instructing the crew to pick up a farm produce unit. These non-stop farm-to-market freightways will bring remote agricultural areas to within minutes of metropolitan markets. At transfer points within the city, individual units automatically separate from the truck train for immediate delivery to shopping centers. Here they open up to become food dispensers. Another carrier sweeps directly to a seaport destination, where it becomes a neatly stacked unit in the ship's hold. To meet faster delivery schedules, these highways of commerce lead to launching ports, where the mobile freighter becomes the payload of a cargo rocket. Highway and automotive design will move forward together. First, we'll have the more efficient gas turbine car, then the speedier jet, the inexhaustible atom, and possibly the sun-powered electro-suspension car which needs no wheels. These spectacular conceptions will lead to new dimensions for the American highway. Such visionary ideas which today seem sheer fantasy will be commonplace to future generations. There will be miles of tubular highways, air-conditioned routes across hot desert wastelands, over sub-freezing mountain ranges, and even under the ocean. These giant arteries will link together all nations help create a better understanding among the peoples of the world. As in the past, the highway will continue to play a vital role in the progress of civilization. It will be our magic carpet to new hopes, new dreams, and a better way of life for the future. You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. Welcome to Futurama 2. Welcome to a journey into the future. A journey for everyone today into the everywhere of tomorrow. Let us explore together the future. 
a future not of dreams, but of reality. It is now tomorrow. On the moon, there is no air to breathe, no rain to fall, no sound that can be heard. Yet here is man exploring, building his first bridgehead in his span of space. Lunar rovers float magically over powdered plains, range the crater's edge, their elastic train-like bodies conforming to every surface character of the moon. Here are bases of communication and supply, islands of existence built to withstand the melting heat of the lunar day, the shattering cold of the lunar night. Men in space now monitor the Earth, while men on Earth are finding a whole new world of answers to the worldwide needs of man. A diamond brilliance draws us to a frozen shore, to Antarctica, the southern polar cap of the world. Here, nations of the world, speaking the common language of science, probe for the Earth's secrets through countless centuries of ice. In mobile laboratories, form expeditions into the vast white wastelands of the still unknown. And here is Weather Central, forecasting to the world the great climatic changes born in the Antarctic's never-ending winds. Technicians kept warm within their walls of ice gather data from the depths of space, from polar winds, surrounding seas, in microseconds relaying information wherever needed anywhere on Earth. Three quarters of our Earth lies beneath the cold, still deeps of the sea, a water world in which we now can find abundance far beyond our dreams. Now we can farm and harvest a drifting, swimming, never-ending nourishment, food enough to feed seven times the population of the Earth. In aquacopters, search the ocean floor to find miles deep vast fields of precious minerals and ores. And in the deepest trenches of the seas, study at first hand long hidden secrets of survival. Work easily the rich oil deposits of the continental shelves, while trains of submarines transport materials and goods along the waterways of the undersea. And in warmer seas are new realms of pleasure, a weekend, if you wish, at Hotel Atlantis in the kingdom of the sea. A holiday of thrills and of adventure, of radiant wonders in the sun-bright gardens of the sea. Fabulous coral reefs lead us back to the land, an equatorial land. Now, technology has found a way to control the wild profusion of this wonder world. A jungle road is built in one continuous operation. First, a searing ray of light, the laser beam, cuts through the trees. Then, a giant machine, a factory on wheels, grinds up the stumps and jungle growth, sets the firm foundation, forms the surface slabs, sets them in place, and the roadway bed is paved. These forest highways now are bringing to the innermost depths of the tropic world the goods and materials of progress and prosperity, creating productive communities that can enter profitably the markets of the world, and offering to us all enchanting tours through the storybook forests of tropic lands. The mountain barrier, legendary challenge of man, now invites communal living in a world of awesome beauty. A new system of highways spans the continents to transport men and goods swiftly and separately across the land. And for our deserts, a new technology, waters from the sea made fresh as rain, to nourish crops planted in the sand, produce from seed to shipment 
programmed and processed by a new agriculture, a science of plenty for an ever-growing world. People live today where they will. Neither terrain nor distance a deterrent to where the men of the city build their homes. All roads lead, as they have for centuries, to the great centers of commerce and communication, as the Continental Highway now leads us to the city of tomorrow. Plazas of urban living rise over freeways. Vehicles, electronically paced, travel routes remarkably safe, swift, and efficient. Towering terminals serve sections of the city, make public transportation more convenient, provide ample space for private cars, and from a lower level, covered moving walks radiate to shopping areas that are now truly marketplaces of the world. Its traditions and its faiths preserved, there is new beauty and new strength in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise, but man must chart his own course into tomorrow, a course that frees the mind and the spirit as it improves the well-being of mankind. How about a beer, fellas? Great. George, what's the fuss, Gus? Beer. <laughs> All around, George. Oh, change the pace, Grace. Something special then. Gotcha. Here comes the bull. Bull, the Schlitz malt liquor bull. When you want a change of pace. Ooh, get yourself a big bowl change. Nobody makes malt liquor like Schlitz. You're so right, Dwight. Put the bowl where your beer is. Schlitz malt liquor bull. Ford introduces the new Futura. dramatic combination of styling and technology for 1978 and beyond. Futura, its striking design is the result of computer modeling and extensive aerodynamic testing. Its excellent fuel economy results in part from the use of lighter weight high strength metals in Futura's construction. And Futura's ride is the result of a newly created advanced front suspension system. Futura. In a world where cars are looking more and more alike, it represents a change. A dramatic combination of styling and technology from 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Ford dealer for a personal test drive. From the edge of time, from the depths of the earth, Timex takes quartz to make a watch for a new age. The new Timex quartz, a watch so accurate you may not have to set it again this year. Bib, sleek, and more beautiful than any watch you could ever imagine. The new Timex, the new Timex quartz. You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. Future, when American fashion will look like this, American kitchens will look like this, and the American mayonnaise will look like this. Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. Sure, some things may change, but the creamy, rich taste of Hellman's will never go out of style. After all, it's been an American favorite since 1912. Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. A great taste for 65 years, and still counting. Folks, meet my new helper. Denby Belvedere. Where's the leak? Where's the leak? Denby, be serious. Yes, boss. Now, Denby, for openers, you've got to make sure the Belvedere customer is satisfied with good workmanship, good materials, good supervision, and good salesmanship. Is that clear? Yes, sir. But most important, the thing to remember is that for 30 years we've been saying, we do good work. Right. We do good work. Call now. Tyler E. 7100. Good work, son. It just runs in the family. Tonight on Nightline 1985, three experts in the fields of economics, sports, and world affairs make some serious and not so serious predictions about the coming year. Finally, the new year is traditionally a time to wonder what the future will bring. 
The trouble is, of course, predicting the future is not that easy. And to prove the point, the Smithsonian Institution has set up a display at a Chicago museum. As ABC's Chris Bury reports, it's a good thing 1985 will not be everything some visionaries thought it would be. Half a century ago, Hollywood predicted this would be New York City in the 1980s, a tomorrow where anything was possible. What do you want, a boy or a girl? A boy. Give me the good old days. Back in the good old days, experts predicted nearly everyone would be flying by now. You could pilot a personal gyrocopter, or fly in machines with one enormous wing, or even dozens of wings. And why not pull into Chuck's Flying Diner, if you could afford the Frank of the future? In 1949, Moulton Taylor's aero car was one vision actually getting off the ground. But his dream turned out to be the government's nightmare of overcrowded skies. When we went to Washington and said, we're going to build 2,500 of these things, the people in Washington said, ah! No way. The Ford in your future was the Nucleon. In 1958, the company revealed this model of a nuclear-powered dream car with an atomic reactor only six feet from the back seat. We figured all we got to do is uh, get an atomic bomb, take it apart, and we all know what a nuclear <laughs> engine uh, feels like or should be. Come here. Electro the Moto Man was a 1939 dream machine designed to help future dads around the house. Who? Me? Yes, you. Penelope Shue, the scarecrow of the future, would guard the garden. That's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. Even more remarkable was Mom's mechanized miracle kitchen. And now, believe it or not, the floor is automatically cleaned, too. What you see coming out of the wall is a self-propelled floor cleaner. And thanks to synthetic waterproof furniture, say goodbye to dusting. Just take a garden hose and put a drain in your living room floor. Perhaps we should be grateful that there are some ideas whose time never came. For we have seen the future, and sometimes it doesn't work. Chris Bury, ABC News, Chicago. And on that note, we count the blessings we don't have. That's our report on World News Tonight. Peter Jennings will be back tomorrow. I'm Steve Bell. For everyone at ABC News, good night. The toys of tomorrow will be of every description, and so realistic, you can hardly tell them from the real thing. There will be comical animals like Mighty Mouse who can carry on a conversation or fly through the air with the greatest of ease. You'll find a lot more Wild West action at Fort Laramie. This famous headquarters is now fighting off a band of 30 Redskins, and it has all the equipment, including an operating cannon, to wage a realistic cowboy and Indian battle. More up to date will be this flying boxcar and combat team. It has a howitzer, radar controlled equipment, and an atomic cannon. See this giant army transport with revolving propellers? Well, the exciting part of this toy is that within a few seconds, all the pieces can be put into the fuselage, ready to fly off to a new battlefield. Someday in the future, scientists will be firing satellites into space. And one of the new toys certainly will be a satellite launcher truck. The truck will have four flying saucers. They can be mounted onto a launching platform. Wind it. Aim it, press the control button, and off it goes into the stratosphere. Well, if not the stratosphere, for a distance of 75 feet anyway. Ideal Sky Sweeper will be a modernistic anti-aircraft truck that plots the enemy with a secret searchlight. It's really a film projector. Six different enemy targets can be screened on the wall. 
First, load your Nike rockets. Then zero the enemy in through a crosshair sighting device. When the target has been tracked, blast away. Fire one. Fire two. Some people say toys of the future will blow up the earth. They're right, for here's a globe intended to be blown up. Light as a beach ball, yet it's authentic in every detail, with over 2,000 names of oceans, countries, and cities. It will even have a wrought iron stand. It's typical of the ingenious toys of tomorrow, educational and lots of fun. What will they think of next? Well, if they can improve on these ideas, I'll be a monkey's uncle. You're watching Sleep Core. Sleep tight. The year 2081, and Wendy Mead is having company. Rodney, set the table. I'll dial chicken a la Wendy. And now, for a beautiful shine on this kitchen floor. Your robot again? Nope, my mop and glow. Mop and glow? Mop and glow. There's no quicker, easier way. Just squirt it on and damp mop. Mop and glow cleans and shines at the same time. Beautiful, and it was so easy. Honey, mop and glow is still the easy way to a beautiful floor. You asked for it, you got it. The car of the 80s is here. The new Toyota Celica Liftback. A car which meets or exceeds all 1980 federal fuel economy and safety standards. An aerodynamic work of art with the best Toyota engineering features of our time. A durable car built to last the trip to your tomorrow. The new Celica Liftback. The car of the 80s. You asked for it, you got it, Toyota. Future Shop Update with Don and Jaylene. The smoke is settling on the electronics pricing war and emerging victorious is the Future Shop's guarantee of lowest prices or the difference refunded. Celebrations have begun. Now that victory is at hand, the Future Shop continues to offer stereos, VCRs, and computers at the prices that won the war. And it's now obvious that the Future Shop is your total entertainment center for selection and low prices. The Future Shop. Vancouver, Richmond, and now in Coquitlam. Pine Tree Village, Barnett with sensing probes that follow the road with no help from the driver. Cars without steering wheels. Cars without transmissions. Highly advanced experimental cars that will eventually mean better production cars in a score of ways. Well, in the year 2000, um, I think I'll probably be the spaceship to the moon dictating robots to robots or else I may be I don't know having a in charge of a robot court judging some robots or I may be at a funeral of a computer or if something's gone wrong with their nuclear bombs I may be sort of coming back from hunting in a cave. I don't like the idea of sort of getting out and finding you've got a cabbage pill to eat for breakfast or something. Oh, I think um, oh, all these atomic bombs will be dropping around the place. And it was one will get near the centre because it will sort of make a huge, great big crater. And then the whole world will just melt and the world will become one vast atomic explosion. And it will become like a supernova, stars. Some madman will get the atomic bomb and um, just blow the world into oblivion. There's nothing you can do to stop it. The more people who get bombs, the more... Well, somebody's going to use it one day. Well, I think that it'll be so, it'll be so overpopulated that there'll all be wars, all nuclear explosions and everything. It'll make the Earth, you know, too much radiation on it. It'll become too hot to live on. I think that there'll be no life at all, really, on, on the Earth. I don't think there is going to be atomic warfare, but I think that there is going to be all this automation. People are going to be out of work and a great population. I think something has to be done about it. I, if I wasn't a biologist, I, that's what I'd like to do. Um, 
to do something about the the uh, population problem. Try and try and sort of um, temper it somehow. I don't know how. I think it'll be very dull, and people would all be squashed together so much there won't be any fun or anything. And people will be rationed to the amount of things they can have, because if they had too many things, it would just squash their houses, and there there just wouldn't be room for them. I think it'll be a. Uh... Um, people will be regarded more as statistics and as actual people. I don't think it's going to be so nice. I think sort of all machines everywhere, everyone doing everything for you, you know, you'll get all bored and... I don't think it'll be so nice. I think it's going to be very boring. And everything will be the same. I mean, people will be the same and things will be the same. I... First of all, those computers are taking over now computers and automation and in the year 2000 there just won't, won't be enough jobs to go around and the only jobs there will be will pe be for people with high HQ, you know, high IQ who can work computers and such things and other people are just not going to have jobs, there just aren't going to be jobs for them to have. I expect they will set aside parts of the country solely for recreation uh, and have large blocks of built up areas. And I think these are going to be very ugly indeed, probably. No, I don't think I'll still be on Earth. I think I'll be under the sea. I think the population will have gone up so much that um, either everyone will be living in sort of big domes on the Sahara or they'll be under the sea. There'll be so many people that they'll have to have an overflow into the sea. And so there'll be houses underneath the sea and houses above the sea. They're not going to have so many square houses, you know, with more curves and artistic designs instead of a, just sort of boxes like they've got nowadays. People can't live in, wouldn't be able to live in ordinary houses because that would take up too much room. It'd have to be in flats, piled on top of one another, like that. And the houses would be rather small and um, everything would be um, cramped up, very cramped. Animals as they have here. Uh, sheep and cows and livestock, but they'll be kept in batteries. Uh, they won't be allowed to graze on pastures. They'll be kept in buildings all together, all in one big building and artificially reared so they'll yield a larger, be bigger and give more food. All the Sputniks and everything that are going up uh, is sort of interferes with the weather. And I think the sea may rise and um, will uh, sort of cover some of England. And there'll be just islands left from, like, um, only the highlands in Scotland and some of the big hills in England and Wales. I don't think all England will be wiped out because some of it will be uh, too high. I think the sea will rise to about 300 to 600 feet. Might freeze. The sun, I think, will probably burn out. And there's an ice cap coming down from the North Pole. I think it'll cover the Earth. It might have another ice age. And I don't think there's anything to be frightened of. And a lot of people think it's going to explode, but I'm certain it won't. Um, I think it'll be much more efficient. Um, because there'll be more cures for the diseases. And not so many people will get sick. And the black people, you know, won't be sort of separate. They'll be all mixed in with the white people. And... Um, you know, the poor people and rich people will become the same. Well, they will be poor and rich, but they won't sort of look down on each other. I'm not looking forward to living in that year, about 50 years' time. I mean, the world seems to be in such a terrible state now, let alone in 50 years' time.